screen recording should work as well. Yeah. Let's try it. Or this is not the most important, uh, the, the most important one. It's it's going to be more important later. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, first of all, thank you for having me, my no, man. No, no, I, I, I need I, to thank. I am the thanker here. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a quick glimpse. <clears throat> it's not a long journey. It hasn't been a long journey, but a lot has happened in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, started jujitsu many years ago. But I, on and off, I had to do my anesthesia training. I had to watch my hands. Um, uh, so I, I stopped. So I had a total of six months of jujitsu in many years. Mm -hmm. uh, September of last year, I decided to go back into it full time. I mean, like full time. And I went back into it September 1st and I signed up for a tournament one month later. Even though I had it trained in seven years. I, I had it done, and even in my training seven years ago, I only did six months. So it wasn't like I was this purple belt who took that. I was just a white belt. I signed up for a tournament, and somehow I took silver. Oos. <laughs> and uh, I lost in the finals in a head and neck choke. And I realized there were things that I just, I've been back for a month, man. I was resting. So then I decided to really kick this up full time. But. The tournament was October 14th. A lot happened in the world October 7th. A lot happened overseas. So I wasn't thinking about jujitsu, man. I do a lot of medical humanitarian work. So the only thing that was on my mind was going to Gaza. So here I am thinking, now I'm fully dedicated to jujitsu. What can veer me off? Fucking almost World War Three can veer me off. So I was trying to get in because, and this is a little personal, man. Uh, like one of my best friends, had 46 family members killed it's hard when you're getting messages from your friends sending you a biscuit saying this is all i had to eat so i gave it to my daughter and my wife and i haven't eaten in three days so the last thing on my mind was jujitsu so i actually stopped going to training i stopped completely my professor calls me he's from bosnia i don't know if he saw a video went viral of him in a 7-eleven grocery store where he held the guy down for 18 minutes until police came. I'll send it to you. It has like 20 million views on YouTube, man. My professor calls me. He's like, you need to come back to jujitsu. And I said, no, man, I'm, I'm good. My mind this is the last thing on my mind. He's like, dude, you just won a tournament. Use that momentum. Come back and train. You obviously have the athleticism. Let's get you back into it. I said, no, 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 I'm not interested. And then Nate Diaz, the, one of the UFC fighters, came to Chicago and came to my jiu-jitsu spot and my professor's like, you have to come come and meet Nate and Jake Shields these guys are, you know, jiu-jitsu so I went back and I decided I have to stick to this at that point I set up a schedule I was doing jiu-jitsu four days a week I was lifting three days a week cardio two days a week and I signed up for another tournament uh, when I signed up for another tournament I had three matches, I won all three matches on points uh, took gold it was in an adult division. I'm masters. I'm 34. Took gold, uh, but my cardio sucked. My technique was lacking, so I realized I really have to. All right. I decided six weeks later to sign up for IBJJF and sign up in the adult division. 16 people, um, won all four matches, two by submissions, two by points. Nobody scored a point on me. I won 10-0 and 8-0. And then I caught somebody in a cross collar from guard and a Kimura from guard. And I took gold. And yeah. then uh, then I showed up to my gym the next day and I was promoted to blue belt. And even though I didn't feel like I deserve it, I said to him, man, I came back in September. Uh, but he said to me, you've put more map time in than guys that I've given blue belt after two years. I want to, uh, because I, I know that we're going to put this one on, on YouTube and social media, this interview. Uh, so it's more like a podcast than, than, a, than a coaching at this point. But there are two things yeah. I want to mention here. The first thing you, when you decided that I cannot focus on jiu-jitsu now, I need to focus on the, the big problems in the world and try to solve them. The mistake of doing that is the same as saying my my wife or girlfriend left me, so I'm not gonna eat well and I'm gonna stay up until 3 a.m. It's not gonna yeah. help anything. And stop training jiu-jitsu is like, just like saying I'm gonna down prioritize my mental health so that I can be even more agitated and out of balance. And that's why that's what you are. 
re uh, consciously or unconsciously realized and that's why you're coming back it's not like hey jiu -jitsu is this hobby which is cool and Nate Diaz is here it's so important especially when you're going through tough times like you were trying to be there for your friend jiu -jitsu doesn't take 10 hours a day it takes 90 minutes a day and those 90 minutes is a reset button so that you can wash it's just like washing your hands and brushing your teeth you cannot not do it every time you go to the toilet you wash your hands and every day you brush your teeth because otherwise your 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 health will decline slowly or fast so it is so important that when you have found something that is so healthy for your mind as jiu-jitsu that you don't stop in in times of trial and it was it's funny that you say that because when people say to me what is jiu-jitsu what did jiu-jitsu do to you and i say man it, it, it to some extent and you can hear this from so many other men and women when they say jiu-jitsu saved my life mm. in terms of the mentally in terms of refocusing in terms of realizing that you actually man I, I would it's the only sport that i can think of i told you i'm a climber so i would go to the climbing gym i would climb outside but i would climb something and then after i'm down yeah i'm thinking about the problem but my mind's going in a million places you can't afford to have your mind in a million places when another person is on top of you trying to submit you choke you out and body manipulate you in different ways no, it's prim it's primal. It's a primal. You you put your your mind and body in, into primal mode, and that's so healthy. When everything that's happening today is likes, here and engagement, and uh, social media, and uh, a million things, you you get to know about all the problems in the world. Street dogs in Asia, you get to know about it. War on the other yep. side of the ocean, we get to know about it. A uh, hundred years ago, there could, fifty million people could die. We we never knew about it. We could live our live our lives happily. So, like, if you if you want to stay sane in a globalized world, you need something primal, and jiu-jitsu is that thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, unfortunately, I'm so connected, as you know, uh, you know, to a lot of what's happening around the globe, whether it's, you know, I've, I've lived in Africa, I've lived in Latin America, I've done work in the Middle East, uh, in, the, in the Mediterranean Sea. So when you, when a lot of your community becomes that, you yeah. know, humanitarian aid, medics, doctors, nurses who do this kind of work and something big happens, any sort of war, catastrophe, natural catastrophe, earthquake, fire, hurricane, tsunami, war, man-made catastrophes, you become so bunched into that world and you're so involved. And you're the, you're the living proof that that's the upside of globalization. If, if we have street dogs in Asia that are suffering, the whole world can help. And if there is a war, yep. we can actually all do something about it because we know about it and we might even have the power to influence and, uh, and make a difference. And that, that's beautiful. It is powerful. <coughs> uh, but veering back into this and when I realized once I came back to jiu-jitsu once I was starting to train again I always this is gonna sound crazy I forced myself every other month or every three months to sign up for a tournament yeah I am very self-motivated and driven but it pushes me past that I read that there are two pains in life you have to pick one of them the pain of discipline or the pain of regret Mm. but you have to choose one of them mm. the other day I want, I did not want to go to judo the class started at 8.30pm I don't know why the classes start at 8.30pm but they start so late and they go till 10, 10.30 I come home by the time I'm showered it's already 11.30pm mm. and I kept saying I don't want to go I don't want to go I don't want to go but I forced myself the pain of discipline and going sucked but I knew I would have regretted it so much more um so I started training, man. I started training hardcore uh, prior to my last two tournaments. I was in jiu-jitsu three days a week, judo two days a week. And then two out of those days, I would bunch in a workout. And one out of those days, I would wake up before work and do cardio. I bought a, a assault bike and I would do cardio in my living room for, depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing four by fours, four minutes intense, four minute rest, four minutes intense. Or if I'm working on zone two training, which is just keeping my heart rate between 120 and 130 for about an hour. Mm. Either way, cardio outside. So yeah. now, I, now I have another tournament, June 8th, uh, first, first blue belt tournament. 
I really agree with uh, I, I, one of the mistakes that people can hear when they listen to you is uh, copying you directly because when you have a body like you do and the experience that you do with climbing you can pl- climb nines meaning you're a super advanced climber compared to 99% of the population so that's why you can win a 16 man tournament with with, uh, with cross chokes and stuff because you have the physicality in place already so if someone can be an inspiration but it doesn't mean that you you should copy them straight off you might have to work five years bec- before you can start copying stuff but okay i agree with that what you're doing you at least every three months you sign up for a tournament because it creates a pace of training that makes sense after the tournament you can have a beer and a pizza and relax and then get back to training and focus on the stuff you did wrong and then you can follow the curriculum and then the last couple of weeks before the tournament you can focus on specifically to win and i i love that and for me tournament is the only place that i know that people did their best i never i can never compare myself to my training partners because they might have a tough time they might have not have eaten so just because i kick everybody's ass today doesn't mean i'm good but if i win a tournament right. it means what i've been working on works so i 100 percent agree with competition Com- com- competing is not about it can be an ego for some people but for most people it's a it's a rite of passage and having continuous rites of passages is extremely healthy. We don't have any rites of yeah. passages in, in life, generally. Like, getting a promotion at work is nothing. Like, winning a jiu-jitsu tournament, it actually means that you have done something and put in the necessary work and you did it. So, I agree 100%. I mean, I was so... Um, the, the, my second tournament, in which I won the three matches, but I did them and I was so exhausted that I couldn't even open a bottle after my third... That's an amazing feeling. Between my second and my third match, I was laying on the floor, and my coach was like, what are you doing? Get up. I was exhausted. Yeah. I made sure that didn't happen in my tournament two weeks ago. Even though I had Ramadan, which I was not eating or drinking water from morning to night, sunrise to sunset, at 6 p.m., one hour before I was allowed to eat and drink, I would start doing my cardio session. I was still in the gym at 6 p.m., dying between fighting and and competing with my training partners in a competition class and I still wasn't allowed to eat or drink water until 7.20 or whenever the sun came down. But in that tournament, even on my fourth match, by the time it was done full rounds, got up, tied my belt, a little bit of heavy breathing and within two minutes I was back to normal. The The work pays off. The body, the body and mind, the body and mind are capable of, of unreal things. I was never the strongest person. I was never the smartest person. I was never the most uh, athletic. I was never the best looking. I was never. I was always the underdog in life. Always. Everywhere I went, I was always the underdog. But I will outwork any person across from me. I remember hearing Will Smith say, if me and another person get on a treadmill, two things are going to happen to me. Either he's going to get off first or I'm going to die. But I refused to get off that treadmill. <laughs> Not to that extreme, but in terms of work ethic. I wish. Uh, yeah, I, have, I wish. I wish that Will Smith got to train jiu-jitsu because in jiu-jitsu there is oh. always a bigger fish. He would. He would have to learn to submit because he thinks he's tough until he does jiu-jitsu, and then like, oh, right. there are levels of tough. You know, <laughs> I know that part, man. And, and you know, you get humbled all the time, but it's it's interesting getting noticed. I had somebody message me yesterday after I had a class and sparring session. He said, I loved rolling with you. Every time I roll with you, you just get tougher and tougher to roll with. Yeah. And And I'm I'm here, I'm here to make you even tougher. I'm here to teach you all the dirty tricks, all the good principles. After uh, like, I had one guy over 10 years ago, I did like 10 private lessons with him back in Norway and he still uses my stuff and people hate him more every time he goes to training people hate him because he knows the workarounds around the around the normal rules he knows how to t- tweak it so that he he gets his w- will through Man, I'm here for it. I, you know I, I feel like the advantages I have obviously I told you I'm about 182 183 cent for people that are listening in the states that's 661 and uh, about 150 about 155 pounds so 71 72 kilos at most so i'm not the biggest guy but i use my reach i use my length i use all that for my advantage mm. and and it helps you know if i get my hooks on somebody and i take the back it's really hard for them to kind of get out yeah. because of my length um 
so I, I've used some advantages, but some of the things that I have a harder time with because I'm rolling with guys that are bigger than me, even in the tournament, is keeping the side control. Yes. Keeping the pressure to keep side control. Yeah. And I hate, I absolutely hate when people have me in their half guard. Oh, so, you, like, you you don't like uh, you don't like half guard top, and you struggle you, you struggle I with top like side control. Top. I don't know why I don't like half guard top, and I don't like top side control. Immediately when I'm in top side control, I look to mount because the moment I do and I grape find their legs, they freak out. You know, and I'm at that point going for cross collars, Ezekiel, I gift wrapping. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to stop you there because uh, you, you came to the right guy. Top half guard and side control are my favorite spots. So we definitely. What I want you to do is is record yourself in positional sparring, and and then okay. do a, a record yourself for like five minutes, and then do a voiceover on that video and explain to me your thinking in that position, what you're looking for and what you don't want him to do, where you feel comfortable and where you feel uncomfortable, and we will we'll work specifically on those two positions. Perfect. I'll uh, I'll have to figure out. Some of our Saturday and Sunday classes are very busy. Some of our other morning classes are less busy. Uh, so I'd probably take it into one of my morning classes and get a sparring session in with somebody yes. and, and get that. Um, I, I learned recently about the C grip, especially when I'm in uh, top half guard, to just get a hold of their ankle, stand up, and just you know, the, the big one. Somebody said to me, whenever you're in somebody's if you're on top half guard and you don't like it and you want to advance, just stand up. Stand up and use the ankles. That's a that's uh, a that's a tip for for white belts. We can definitely okay. upgrade that advice. I used to do that myself, so I'm not saying it's wrong. But there are yeah. always in jiu jitsu. There's always a, a more elegant way, and uh, yep. and when someone. <laughs> When you do something like that, when you don't like a position and you do something radical, which is just changing the position completely, that is the reason why you are gassing the F out so much. Uh, when someone has decided to put you in a position, you want to kind of tune the positions so that they, they, first they think like, yeah, this is an awesome position. And then after you're done adjusting, they're like, what just happened? I used to like it, but now I can't turn my head and my hip is stuck. And then you get them. Instead of you grabbing the ankle with a C grip and standing the F up, you make them bail on their underhook and then start pushing your face. And then you just pass. So you turn their position around into a trap and you're just waiting for their reaction. And then you're passing. Uh, that, that's, that's, the, that's the black belt level advice. So I'm not saying that you should stop doing what you're doing, but the reason why you're doing it is because you don't have a better plan. And the, like that can be the absolute last backup, what you're doing, but we can definitely find something else to do before that. Yeah, I've done, um, I've done the pressure, shoulder pressure, turning their face, but then somehow I'll get swept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll look at that. We'll look at every everything. Every time I'm telling everything I'm telling you, you try that, and then you show me what happened now. When I did this, I'm like, ah, you overdid yeah. it. You need to do this and this. Small adjustments. Yeah, good. And then another thing, I got hooked into judo, which is something I never thought in a million years I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. um, I was foot sweeped once so effortless, effortlessly, <laughs> and, <Whoop>. and and and. <laughs> He taught it to me. I was in San Diego training at Clark Gracie's. Yeah. And he taught it to me. And I used it in my second tournament. And I hit two people with it. Ooh. And I thought, I thought, I have to start doing it. It's a super so I started power. Three months ago. And yesterday, yesterday I was able to, is it uh, Tomonagi? Tomonagi, at least three people, one of them was a Division One. Wrestler. Write this down. Write this down because you're yeah. you're fighting in the gi and you like yeah. Tomoenage. Yeah. If you combine Tomoenage with color sleeve guard, Tomoenage color sleeve and triangle. Tomoenage color sleeve guard and triangle, and then watch. Ber, no, watch Romulo Baral. Romulo Bahal. R O M U L O Romulo B A B A R R A L Baral. Um, then, then, then you have a, a killer game for competition because if you can just get 
collar, sleeve, move, 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 do the tominage, it fails, come back to collar sleeve, try to spider guard sweep them and then boom, you have the triangle. You can, you can do that uh, for life. You can do that over and over and over and over. That, that can be your go-to uh, go -to game. Because yeah. color sleeve, uh, I talked to a guy and he always teaches color sleeve to blue belts because it's, you know, you can tap black belts with it because it's so quick to get. And if you can just get into the position, you have both your fists, your arms, your body weight, and you connect your feet. Doesn't matter how good the black belt is. If you get to that position, you can get that triangle and then you you get to start the, the match like 90 percent ahead so so that's a that's a good competition strategy funny because there was a white belt in judo but he was a black belt in jiu-jitsu and we were doing red Fury, and i actually hit him with the tomonagi as well and he was not expecting <laughs> i used my advantage being a climber yes. that's why i prefer Yuki. i mean there's i love osotogari i love I mean, I'm now starting to learn Uchimata a little bit more. Again, using the grips, going in the back. Uh, Ogoshi, just different. I want to have multiple things in my arsenal. And even the foot sweeps, you know, just get them one-way learning combinations. But again, I'm a novice. I'm a white belt in judo. Uh, I just study a lot. Yeah. I watch a lot of people. I study a lot of different people. I study your stuff a ton. But, but don't don't overstudy because imagine if you go to university and you do all the courses at the same time the first year it's just going to be confusing so so limit yourself for example here's another combination of, of standing techniques osotogari right in a triangle so osotogari at the top and then you have u uchi u uchi the the inside hook sweep so the your right your right leg on the inside of his left leg Uchi, and then you have Uchimata. And then in the center of that triangle, you write hopping. I just gave you the trio, the, the whole tri uh, triology of Yamashita, uh, the most successful judo guy in history. He had 200, and 200 plus wins outside of Japan. He was unbeaten outside Japan. Uh, and, he, and he was a killer on jumping one leg. He could jump around the dojo on one leg for two hours. He was really fat when he was young. And his brother was hitting him like, stop being fat, jump on one leg. Jump, 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 jump. And he jumped so much that when he got the uchi hook or the usutu hook or the ushimata, he just jumped until the guy fell. Wow. So jumping on one leg, if you have extreme stamina on your standing leg, you can just jump until someone falls. And what's so nice about three positions is they're exactly the same. It's hooking with one leg and jumping with the other, hooking the other leg with, the, with your leg and then turning around and lifting it a little bit more for the Uchimata. And they all work in conjunction. It doesn't matter which combination you do, one of those throws will always work because reacting to one puts you in, in uh, vulnerability for the other. So you only need ever three throws standing up. So instead of trying, instead of do, uh, practicing 10 throws, you, you, uh, you experiment with 100 throws, but you need to find a combination of three that is uh, a killer. And that's, that's, that's the most classic one. That's like planting corn and squash and beans together. It's like, <laughs> it's a, it's a 5,000 year old thing. And, and I just gave you that three sister, three sister combination of, uh, of attacks. So this would be an Osotogari. Obviously, I'm opposite them. I'm right-handed. Yes. So I'm even the left collar yeah. and the right. You're attacking with your right, uh, le your right leg. I, yeah. On their leg. Yeah. They're gonna, gonna step back. Then Ouchi is yes. attacking with my right on their left leg. And their response is sticking their butt out and and uh, stay farming, and then you do the Uchimata. The Uchimata, because it sets you up perfectly, because your right leg is already down there. Yes, and when they're resisting the Uchimata, they're so open for for uh, Usutogari or yeah. or Uchigari. So like every time you start with Uchimata, then you're either gonna follow up with a Uchi or a Usutogari. And, and if you if you know those three throws, um, it's very hard. Once they let you get the grips and begun, it's hard to stop. I know a lot of guys like to pull guard. I hate pulling guard in tournaments. I know eventually that'll be the case. And that's another thing, obviously, to work is when guys pull guard, uh, is to just break away from that. I'm really good at breaking off of close guard. Uh, I have multiple different strategies that I use. Sometimes it's uh, hula pals and 
grab a sleeve and I stand up with it. Sometimes I, I do multiple things. How good are you at getting up from the floor very fast? Let's say you p I pull guard on you and you pull double guard, so you're sitting down on your butt and then I'm trying to come up and sweep you. Are you quicker to get up? I think I'm pretty quick. Okay. I think I'm pretty quick. Analyze yeah. yourself in slow motion. Put on the camera and, and t see, like, w whenever someone pulls guard, the best defense is to use your knees. So if you pull double guard, it's gonna be impossible to armbar and triangle you. So if you pull guard and then as they are coming up to, to get the two points, that's when they're vulnerable. And if you're quicker to get up, now they're sitting on their butt and they don't have the guard attacks. They're thinking about sweeping, not attacking with their legs. And that's when you catch them, you try to, uh, to uh, fix them in a seated position. Um, that, that's, that's something you probably haven't tried. The triangle game is something I really want to work on. I have very long legs, I do yoga, I'm pretty flexible. So I feel like my strongest game is the close guard game. Yes. I have a very good ability to bring people yep. in. I say, I say I, go to Hodger Gracie TV and sign up. Hodge Gracie TV yeah. sign up. Hodge Gracie is the closed guard guy, best of all time, and his stuff is simple. He he says jiu jitsu is simple. You just have to do it right. And for someone with your body proportions and your grips, I think the the fundamentals you can get from Hodger and and uh, uh, all the nuance and stuff we can talk about and figure out. But the the absolute fundamentals, Hodger has it nailed down. He has the best gi game in the world. I I use you know I'll always threaten a cross collar choke. They always get their hands. It comes to a specific position. Again, I use my grips to get a C-grip on the wrist for a Kimura. Threaten it. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not, I always use it as a hip bump sweep. Yep. Almost always. And the moment I hip bump sweep, I'm on their mount. I always will grab a collar. I always yeah. almost go to like a mod because they're going to want to go to the side yeah. and I'm already grabbing a collar. And the absolute and classic... The absolute classic combination with hip bump sweep is triangle. You hip bump sweep to triangle. Uh, nail that one. Like. I, to learn that the hip bump sweep to triangle yeah. i feel like that can be successful yeah but i definitely want to work uh you know more arm bars i mean i want to work everything man I'm, yeah but, but don't don't said, work don't work everything uh, think like this uh, think like this i don't deserve to work everything i need to gamify this so that when i have gotten a b c down only then can i start working d e f um like hard sparring i love i just like to spar hard bro you don't deserve to spar hard you need to do three mellow rounds before you can get that you know that that fire because uh there can be too much of the good thing and and the, you love f training hard and and fighting the hardest rounds with the biggest strongest guys but that's gonna kill you um i'm talking from my own experience so you create a you create a system for yourself that you have to follow and that's going to motivate you even more that you have these restrictions. I actually read uh, one of the black belts that won Worlds, I forgot his name, but he's in a gym and he said, I don't have anybody beyond the purple belt in my gym and I spar mainly against blue belts. Yeah. He talked about it, to go up against guys who are higher level than you just to see, you know, it, it teaches you to work on your defenses more, especially yes. if they've been practicing but it's good to also go up against guys who are lower level so you can actually hone your skill yeah. and i saw that happen yet i went up against the, a white belt you know and uh i was able to work some things purposely letting go some things to work some other things i have a re whenever i'm in mount i usually will pin down threaten an americana or threaten something with the arms even if i threaten a cross collar and i get their arm across and i yes. always end up gifting yeah. Always end up gift. Write this down. Write this down. Gift wrap. When you have the gift wrap, uh, work on the body triangle. Setting up the body triangle so that you don't just fall back on the ground, but you're actually trying to sit on top of him for as long as possible, so that when you're gift wrapping, you're you're lifting him up to your chest. Yeah and then trying to get the, the body triangle perfectly. Because when you get the body triangle over the l lowest ribs, they're gonna tap yep. as soon as you close it. But a lot of people, they just fall back and do a sloppy body triangle. But when you have the gift wrap, you have uh, you have opportunity to finish the fight right there. If you get the body triangle tight with the gift wrap, then you don't need a rear naked choke. You just submit them over the, yeah? I got in the body by accident. I had a body triangle and a gift wrap, and the guy tapped. They said, "Are you okay?" He's like, "I felt like I couldn't breathe." Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I'm sure. I'm sure that we're gonna have a lot of situations like this. But but for me, like, 
uh, you can you can probably be led astray many ways uh, and miss the golden opportunity if you already like I can tell you that is not just a fluke that's a that's a principle that will serve you for years the other thing I like to do with the gift wrap is the moment I get them gift wrap I go I get a little bit higher in my mouth they almost always yes. turn because I mean you they have to, to turn yeah. them yeah I let go of the gift wrap and I end up grabbing a top lapel yeah I put my in the back of their head and I have their leg and it becomes this modified bow and arrow mm-hmm. uh, while they're laying sideways. Nice. And I, I've, I've caught some, I've, I caught a blue belt with it the other day, actually. If you can, if you can attack and put pressure without losing, without risking the position, that that's always a good idea. Uh, yeah, I... I, I Somebody else showed me, he's like, you're doing too much. You're putting the knee behind the head, you're doing this. He said, the moment you have the cross collar sleeve here, he said, just go above the head and just choke. And it becomes like a, almost like an Ezekiel choke of sort. Uh, mm. I'll have to record it to show it to you. But um, whenever, actually, whenever you tie up your arms, you will yep. lose base. So if you can, yeah. if you can find uh, both uh, a grip where you can put pressure and attack, and also stay in balance and not lose the position, that's what you want to go yeah. for. And you might even want to give up the submission just to stay there and have, because you have submissions where they tap, and then you have positions that are so strong that you're not tapping him, but you're draining his tank. And yeah. that can yeah, yeah. a lot of times that can be more valuable, especially for the first. Let's say a fight is let's say it's five minutes. For the first two to three minutes, you don't really try to submit unless he gives the submission to you. But you don't want to spend and waste your energy trying to submit in the beginning of the fight. You you want to get to a position where, like his tank, there's holes holes in his tank and it's just draining. And then when he's under 30 percent, you finish it because then then his uh, mental state is not uh, is not uh, enough to defend. I think we're we're running out of time because it says that uh, both my battery and Zoom is is ending the call. So let's do one more and then let's wrap up. Okay, uh, one more now? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me so hit end and then do I go back to No, the no, no. Again? I mean I mean let's do let's do one more question and then we finish up. So, um, let me see. So the biggest things I said, my hardest points are top side control uh, and top half guard. Mm-hmm. I find myself so comfortable on bottom half guard. Yeah. Um, cuz I've recently started watching Magic Hay. And I've caught quite a few people in a baseball bat choke, which they were putting pressure on me, including a judo black belt. Uh, he was putting a lot of, and he was, I think, a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. But he was putting so much pressure on me, and I had the grip here. The moment he came to side control, I bumped him up, and the moment I turned, it was, it was done. He had, I, that's such a blue belt and, thing to do. I remember back in the days in 2008, uh, I, there was a blue belt that used to do that too. And and you know, the, it's it's one of the it's one of the most uh, pimpiest mic drop moments you can do. Um, and and uh, yeah. it's gonna stop working one day, but enjoy it while it lasts. You know, surprisingly, imagine if you look on his YouTube, man, he's hit. I watched at least ten black belts get hit with this. He was in IBJJF in Mexico, I think 2019, and you can hear the other coach's corner telling the fighter, don't pass the side control. They're yelling yeah. at him, pass the side control. He passes the side control and imagine hits him yeah, with it. Yeah, that's, that's nice. So, so, some people can break the, break the rules, but you, you really need to, there is a Dunning-Kruger curve where it's, it works and then it stops working and then you need to work so much more to make it work on everybody. Uh, so you, you really have to be ready to commit if you want to, because that's, uh, by definition, that's called stupid shit. Uh, letting someone yeah, pass yeah. to get a choke and giving your back is like the worst uh, worst uh, ever. <laughs> like it breaks all the rules. Uh, so it only works when it works. Uh, so you, you, yeah. I, I would not recommend that as a. You, you never say that I recommended it. You just have to be absolute. Like, like Magid Hage, he, uh, he is a psychopath. That's why it, uh, it works. Like he, he can work on something not thousand hours, a thousand hours, but uh, fifty thousand hours to make it work. Yeah. So, you have to be prepared similar. for that. I share a very similar OCD to him, man. Ah, good. I, I, I have watched so much of his stuff and I studied it. I didn't try it on anybody, and then I started to try it on people, and I'm hitting everybody. Write write this down. Uh, Baseball choke, 
plus loop choke equals love. Loop choke and baseball choke are in the same category. They are they are brothers. Are you in baseball choke mainly from side control? It seems like it's kind of a side control where you're neon belly and you, I just find that such a hard position. And then you go north south. I always lose it. It's so hard for me. Mm. It's so hard for me yeah. from from side. But it, but it's but it's it's not a, it's not important for you to to master submissions. Uh, it's fun to master submissions, but you only ever need one or two. Uh, what yeah. you really need to work on is not losing the positions because you will hate yourself when you lose a final because you got bumped over in half guard. Like, that's annoying, <laughs> really annoying. No, no. Position over submission. Yeah, no, submission submission is important, but not if you're losing the position for it. I mean, you're not going to get the submission unless you have a good position anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no, sometimes I'm... it's not even worth to do the submission because the position is so good that the guy is, you know, faltering, just staying there. Yeah. It, it depends. I mean, in, in tournament, you know, if, if I'm up on points, it's something that I'd want to hold. If I'm down by points, I'd definitely look to advance mm. to, to gain. I'm a little nervous for this tournament, knowing it's, you know, first blue belt tournament. But a part of me is like... They all have necks, man. And I've faced many blue belts in my gym and purple belts. And I just go in and do what I do. Continue my conditioning, cardio, write and everything the, write else. Write this down. Nervous or excited? If you are nervous, it means you didn't prepare well enough. If you're excited, it means you prepared well enough. So if you feel if you feel anxious, nervous, no, anxious, a, no. no. Then it's excitement. A, then it's excitement. Yeah. And if you if you feel if you feel nervous, anxious, it means that you didn't prepare well enough. Just prepare better. I, I, I put in the work. I don't know if any person I knew I knew for certain out of the sixteen men in the IBJJF, I knew for certain nobody was waking up that early doing cardio, yeah. or doing jujitsu yeah. at nighttime or doing at night. I knew this. Yeah. And I know for certain I've been doing jujitsu in the morning. I have a cardio session today and then mm. back to jujitsu tomorrow. I we, we'll, we'll work on some things, man. Especially yes. the top half, top side control. Yeah. Those would be great. And then the Hadrian Gracie TV. I thought about it. It's not that expensive. I think it's like seven dollars a month or ten dollars a month. It, it's or worth it. Like this. It's worth it. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah. Hadrian Hodger, is the guy, and he makes it very so simple will, too. It's not like you have to watch uh, two hundred hours of Dan her DVDs and learn everything at once. Hadrian is just like do, 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 do. it's simple. I, and also, I want to transition to more leg stuff. Um, mm, don't that, that, don't not yet it's too soon not, not yeah. yet no no everybody's doing it and it's like a it's like a, a rabbit hole that you're never going to get out of uh, learn to defend them but don't learn to attack yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's a rabbit hole because once people start doing them and they hit them on a couple of people they don't do anything else exactly that's all they yeah